Namaste. Welcome back to the Nirvega Vidya channel. Today we will be continuing our discussion for cell organelles. Uh, before we continue the conversation, uh, in case you haven't seen the previous videos where we introduce uh, the concept of cell and cell organelles and the other video where we discuss in detail about the different type of cell organelles please go and check out those videos first because that will help you to understand what we are discussing in this video much better today we will be continuing the discussion about cell membrane and a very important aspect of cell membrane in the human body which is bioelectric potential when we talk about bioelectric potential as you can see on the screen bioelectric potential what is bio bio means related to a living organism and electric is something that involves a movement of charged uh, atoms or charged uh, ions from one point to another and potential when we talk about electric potential it is the amount of work needed to move that charge from one point to another now why is this concept important for us uh, when we talk about bioelectric potential it forms an integral part of how signals are sent from one cell to another in our body where the earlier when we spoke about the cell membrane we spoke about how different materials cross from the extracellular space that is the outside of the cell to the intracellular space that is the inside of the cell and bioelectric potential is a very good way of communication between one cell and another especially in the nervous system when we discuss the nervous system and we understand the fundamental unit of the nervous system which is a neuron we will understand how integral bioelectric potentials are to our functioning as a human being so just to give you a very basic understanding at this point when we talk about bioelectric potential the normal human cell as you see over here resting potential the resting potential means the potential electric potential of the cell at the normal stage is negative that is usually around minus 70 millivolts generally that is a very very uh, weak uh, amount in terms of strength compared to what you know electric uh, potentials we would see normally around us when we are looking at electrical appliances but because this is in accordance with the size of the cell hence the strength may seem weak but it is very very potent so what this does is when there are certain signals to be sent as you can see over here this is our cell membrane as you can see these are different transported uh, transmembrane uh, proteins which allow the movement of ions across the cell membrane uh, as you can see over here uh, this is a potassium ion this is a sodium ion this is a chloride ion if you look at it there are four positive uh, uh, ions over here and five negative ions and there are more negative ions coming in and this positive ion is leaving so the overall charge over here if we have to look at it is more negative whereas outside there are more of positive ions which is by outside it is positive sometimes what happens is that a lot of positive ions will rush into the cell uh, through the cell membrane and make the inside positive and the outside negative and this change in the charge in the inside and the outside this causes the formation of an electric current and this current is what we measure when we me measure signals through instruments like the EEG which is the electroencephalogram which measures signals sent by neurons in the brain during certain activities and ECG which is the electrocardiogram which is basically an instrument which helps us 
to measure signals sent by the different cells in the heart when they are functioning. So bioelectric potential as a concept plays a very key role in the functioning of our nervous system and in the functioning of our heart, both of which are very, very essential to our survival as a human being. We will understand more in detail about how bioelectric potential helps us when we understand the nervous system and the cardiovascular system. Now we move on to the concept of unique cell structures. In our earlier video, if you had seen, we discussed the various cell organelles such as the nucleus, ribosomes, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi body, the uh, lysosomes, the cell membrane, the cytoplasm and the cytoskeleton. These all are usually what are found in uh, cases of normal cells, uh, also including the mitochondria. But there are certain cell structures which are only form, found in certain types of cells in our bodies because again, as I had mentioned earlier, by the process of evolution, some cells specialize further. The cell differentiation occurs in a way so that the cell can perform the function that it is supposed to perform. And that's where these unique cell structures come in. Moving on, the first cell structure that is unique that we will be discussing is cilia. Cilia are basically microscopic hair-like structures that can move in waves, like a whip-like fashion. If you can see my hand, they move in whip-like fashions in waves together. So there will be a lot of cilia as you can see in the picture here. A lot of cilia will constantly in a whip-like manner in waves they will move in the direction okay as you can see these are the multi ciliated cells which means that the cell has more than one cilia uh, structure on the periphery on the cell membrane these are present on the outer surface of certain cells for example in our respiratory system if you imagine that the air is going in from here and it enters our uh, lungs this entire passage and the bronchi and the bronchioles have the cilia on the outer edge of the cells because when we inhale dust particles or we inhale uh, various bacteria and other sort of uh, foreign particles, these cilia will actually help to trap those materials and then throw them out when we sneeze or we cough. This is the purpose why the cilia is present over here. Okay, so this is our first unique cell structure that can be found in the human body. Moving on to the flagella. Flagella is the plural word. The singular word is flagellum. That is one structure. Flagella are basically a little tail like structure that can help in the movement of the cell from one place to another. The only human cell that has a flagellum is the sperm cell in the human male reproductive system. As you can see in this diagram, the human cell, uh, sperm cell, this is the head region, this is the middle piece which has all mitochondrion and this is the plasma membrane covering the uh, tail inside. This is purely meant for propulsion so as and when the tail moves in a wave like fashion it will help the sperm to pro to move further uh, in whatever uh, areas it has to move so this is the only cell in the human body which has a flagellum Next video, we will be discussing a very, very important topic of our existence, which is the genetic material, that is the DNA and the RNA. So stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.